here on bologna sandwich. Welcome everybody. Rob Stardom here with the man, the myth, the legend, beautiful Bobby J. I've been so excited to be able to do this beer and bologna sandwich with him. It's gonna be a special one. So unfortunately, Bobby, I have not brought any bologna. It's been a tough week. I haven't had a show for at least one week, but I have three beers. We did a rent a cameraman, so I'm gonna give him one beer. He gets last pick. These, so this one was from Richard Manitoba. This one was from somebody's bag I think they gave me. And this one was from Lilac Resort. They're free beer. So which one would you like there, sir? You get the choice first. Well, I think I'm watching my figure, so I, I think I'll take the Bud Light. The Bud Light? Well, I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna just say again, thank you, Richard Manitoba. This was an awesome beer. Cameraman, here's your beer. <laughs> Thanks for the shirt. <laughs> that was funny. Nice and who, who do I thank for this? I can't remember. <laughs> I'll thank you. Oh, Thanks. there we go, there we Thanks, go. Rob. Can I, can I actually open it? You can, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna drink this. Can I, can I drink it? You can drink it. It's not cold. I was have... just gonna say you should have <laughs> had a little freezer pack in there for me. Okay, remember how we used to do it in the States? We'd, we'd do it in stereo? Oh, no, it's too late too already. Late. <laughs> On our road trips, we'd uh, open our beers in stereo. <laughs> hey, we'll get, to, we'll get to some of that. We'll get to some of that. So usually beer and bologna ask some crazy questions. I, but I want this more like a, a bit of a mini shoot interview. We'll talk about your career. Bobby, you've been a staple in Winnipeg wrestling forever. What got you involved in wrestling? What got me involved in wrestling? Well, I, I loved it as a kid. I used to watch the AWA. AWA, AWA. you're the big dollies. And, and a lot of people don't know this, but one time me and my buddy jumped in the ring and I, he gave me a clothesline and then we round out of the ring and everyone was high-fiving because we actually didn't get kicked out, which was amazing. How, like, how old were you? 15 maybe? 15? Yeah. Imagine that now going to WWE. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd be going viral. <laughs> With my head getting pounded. <laughs> That's crazy. So then, so then you got involved in wrestling, how old were you? I was actually about 25-ish, around 25. Ooh. See, I was uh, really short and uh, believe it or not. You, I grew, really... you grew a lot since you were 25. What do you mean? I mean, <laughs> I'm so short. <laughs> I'm not short, short. I'm about 5'8", five, 5'9", five, but I was really skinny in high school. You're not tall like me, right? No, I'm <laughs> nobody's tall as you. <laughs> and you got big shoes to fill. That's right. <laughs> but uh, so, uh, yeah, I was, I was uh, about 25, and I, I was uh, starting to work out a bit, and then uh, I went to the WWE show at the arena one time, and uh, everyone, uh, we went to the pole market after for drinks, and people were, thought I was Marty Jannetty because I had the same look as him, I guess, and they, they were on the show that night. So then uh, a bunch of people were calling me Marty, and then uh, the nasty boys are calling me Marty, and then and then uh, this family even bought me a beer, and then when Marty came out, the family just looked at both of us and went, "What the?" He <laughs> <laughs> went, "Oh shit!" And then me and Marty were talking, and then we laughed about it. And when I did WWE a few years later, he can you remember me? Because really, because we were kind of like we were almost like brothers, <laughs> looks wise anyway. <laughs> Bros, right? Bros. Yeah. So, but who trained you? How did you get involved? So I, I first I went to Tony Candelo. Legendary promoter Tony Candelo, and he, ah. want, eh, eh, and he wanted more money than I had, like way more. So, so then somebody saw an ad in the paper saying pro, pro wrestlers want training or something along those lines, For sure. and it ended up being Walter Shevchuk, who was Walter the Psycho. He's run no, New Brand Wrestling yeah, yeah, yeah. and stuff. So I gave him two hundred dollars. Two hundred dollars. That's more than I paid to train. But yes, yeah, well, because you had a great promoter behind you. <laughs> And uh, so uh, anyway, so then I went, uh, I gave 200 bucks, he showed me how to lock up, then he basically put me under the tutelage of, uh, of uh, the frog, Terry Tomko, his dad was a uh, promoter in Winnipeg for the AWA. Al Tomko. Yes, and uh, so I'm, I'm actually your first matches with him under a mask called the Zodiac, and apparently huh. Al Tomko was called the Zodiac as well. So. How much training did you have? Not enough. <laughs> <laughs> but I was uh, learning on the fly, like we were doing three bar shows a week in Winnipeg, and you'd work twice. You'd work a, a, a singles match and then, a, and then a, like a six man slam. He called it the Slamabama Tagarama. <laughs> Marty Goldstein will remember that. <laughs> or Battle Royal, right? Uh, no, it was usually just a six man. And, and I remember one time the, the frog was mad at me and he didn't let me go to six man and I was almost crying. I was like, what? Like, I, cause I wanted to get my two matches a night, six matches a week. So I in the first year, I got a ton of work. Like, oh, I time. didn't make any money, but I made, I got a lot of work and then then one day I decided I wanted to, to uh, I wanted to move away from them and uh, work with Tony Candelo. So because that was a big time, right? TV. Tony had big TV at that time. Yeah, TV at that time. And, yeah. And names probably. Not no, not yet. No, not really. But uh, to me, Bob Brown was a name. He was a, to me too. He, Bulldog Bob Brown was a name in my very first match for Tony Candelo. It was me and Easy Rider in Red Lake, Ontario, or somewhere in Ontario. And we went against the natural Don Callis. 
the Jackal, Cyrus, and he teamed up with Bulldog Bob Brown. Guess what? It was heat on the kid that night. <laughs> I had to take all the heat. <laughs> I tagged the easy. <laughs> but it was fun. It was good. I, I want to jump to the chaser. Tell me your opinion of Don Callis. I'm not a fan of Don Callis. He, uh, I don't know. He was always thought he was better than us. So he probably he was, was, but he always had this... Uh, he wasn't better than you, Bob. You're a good guy. I don't care what anybody oh, says. Oh, yeah. And that's another thing we're going to get into. You <laughs> see my catchphrases. I've been, I've been telling you that since the day I met you. <laughs> <laughs> but no, yeah, I just thought... He, I thought he was very talented, great on the mic, but he just looked down on the local guys. Like, And I was a local guy, so he just... He just thought I was just nothing, right? Like, yeah. and, and sure, he made a lot of money in the business. He still is. So good for him. But personally, I don't know. I just, I, I wouldn't be having a beer with him to tell you the truth. <laughs> yeah, he's not my type. Yeah. So, <laughs> sorry, sorry. So, who all did you get to work for, for Kendall? Uh, who did you get to work with? Uh, mostly it was uh, Dave Pinsky under a hood. Dave Pinsky, I give credit for training me. Yeah, Dave's a great guy. Yeah. I don't care what anything's about him either. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love Dave. He was yeah. a very comical guy. And he, he awesome guy, like, yeah, and then sure. so there was. I worked him off. I worked up uh, Pampero El Flip, Flippo. What's he called? A wild band Furpo. Yeah, Furpo, Furpo. I worked with him off and Red Bastine Jr. I loved Rest in Peace Red, but I loved working with him. We had some really good matches. I got one on YouTube. You got to check it out. Awesome, awesome. Hold on, I just want to go back to Furpo. So Furpo is like, I don't know, sixty-five years old. He's still wrestling. Why aren't you still wrestling, kid? Well. <laughs> Never seen ever. Oh, <laughs> but I just haven't wrestled since before the pandemic, and just the way time has worked out. And right. There's been some shows that have come up that I've been asked to do, and I just, just the way my life's been working out right now, I just uh, haven't wrestled. So, so Candelo had some future stars. He had Lance Storm. He had Chris Jericho. He had Edge. He had Christian. He had Rhino. Doctor Luther. You get to work with any of those guys? Uh, I was never on a show with Edge or Christian or Rhino for Tony. Later on, I was on a show with, sure, yeah. uh, with it, but uh, I did team up with Chris Jericho once, one and zero, undefeated. Mark that in your uh, I, record books. I think Jericho even said in his podcast he mentioned you. I think. Yeah, and uh, it's actually if you if you look at his book, he's got his list of matches. Well, I'm in there. <laughs> but then there was him and Lance. I remember when him and Lance came in; they were just so much better than all of us. It was like ridiculous how good they were already. <laughs> and he was just a well, I guess he was about two or three years in the business by the time I met him. Mm -hmm. But yeah, they were just unbelievable how good they were. And obviously, they had very good careers to, to, to show for yeah, now. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Do you, you told me this story, I'm going to kind of cue it up, and I hope you remember it, because we've not talked about this before, kind of like when we wrestled in the, in the ring. <laughs> so, you were telling a story about you were on the bus for Candelo, and you had to pee, and you were a rookie. Remember that story? Yes, that was actually the same the same show that I was talking about, where I got to wrestle my very first match with, with Bob Brown and uh, The Natural. And we were going... Uh, Back then, you needed a licenses and all this insurance crap to, to wrestle in Ontario. But Candela was k faving and so we, he didn't tell the boys anywhere where we were going. And in this big school bus, you put the ring in it. Uh, we went in the center, and then there were some boys at the front in, in seats, and somewhere at the very back. So I was talking to my buddy Brian Jewell, who we went to school together. We ended up being tag team champions together, and uh, yeah, we, we were roommates at one point even before I got into business. And he, I said to him, because Brian like back then he said like the tilt. And, few drinks i think he doesn't drink anymore good he doesn't drink Brian. anymore that's he awesome right that. good for you and uh but anyway uh, i asked him do, do, do these guys like drink on the road because i always i like to have a couple drinks on the road like just no. to, just to, it speeds it up right like it is like if you got an eight hour drive or six hour drive you have four six eight drinks hey that, that it speeds it up so i think he used to be a shy guy a little bit and i think drinking maybe and, and, and that was exactly it too i was i was a pretty shy guy uh, and so then I figured I I, I drank some paralyzer, so I wanted to kayfabe it uh, in case the cops pull us over. So I had a, had a big paralyzer in this big big gold cup. This is the eighties. It was okay to drink and drive back then. I know I wasn't driving. Oh, there, oh, you were drinking oh, in a vehicle. No, okay, so I, we were in a big school bus. Okay, that's okay. It's okay to drink in a bus even in two thousand and twenty-two. Uh, you have to have a bathroom. So oh. yeah, was, that's why I had it to kayfabe. Oh, okay, there we go. Sorry. <laughs> Breaking the law. Breaking, Breaking the law. <laughs> So then, uh, so at, at one point I was really shy. We were going, like it was nonstop or whatever. They wanted to get to where, where, where they were going and I had to, I had to go. I was like, I had to pee. So I was like, I finished off at Paralyzer. I'm like squirming. He's like, do I tell him? I got to like, hello, I got to go pee. I said, ah, I'll just, I'll just pee in this big gulp cup. So I, I, I let it all out. It was like, <laughs> good one. Well, two thirds full. So now it's getting warm. I'm, I'm worried at the, 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 the there's wax around the bottom. And you know how eventually it'll start dripping. And it's like, I don't want to be got pee dripping all over me. 
If I looked You're around, not into that, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> I did know a girl once. Oh, come on. <laughs> uh, I thought we were supposed to keep this uh, on the up and up. Here. Up and up, up and up. <laughs> okay, so I take it. I I, I rolled out. I, no, I, I think I, there was those ones where you had to pull halfway down under the school bus. Yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. So I, I, I looked. to school. <laughs> Didn't help. <laughs> so anyway, I, uh, I, uh. I took. Uh, hang on here. I need a I'm almost done, Mike. Yeah, Again, done. thank you, Richard Manitoba. Rainier beer. I highly recommend it. If you want to sponsor me, Rainier, I'm up for free beer. And thanks, Bud Light, for this free beer too. You can sponsor me they and my sports league, BudLightSports.com. They might have a bigger budget than me. Yeah. So okay. So anyway, so I want to get rid of this warm big gulp cup. Yeah. Full warm, of urine. Full of urine. So I put the window down and I go. Because we're in the middle of nowhere. Gonna hit go to ditch, we're safe. Sure. I didn't realize that I guess the wind the way the wind the wind goes, it alters the course of this uh. <laughs> of this urine-filled big gulp cup. So behind us was the ring announcer, Bob Brown, and Tony Candela. Because I guess the office they follow behind yeah, and they had sure. the ring announcer, they used his vehicle. Yeah, for sure. That's because right. that's the pecking order, right? Yeah, sure. So so then all of a sudden, I didn't even know realize they went. Whew, and I guess it hit the windshield of, the, of their vehicle <laughs> behind us. Oh, so, so then I, I, I'm, I'm just I'm just uh, all of a sudden the the, the, the I guess I pull the front and then the school bus stops and all of a sudden the ring announcer gets in and just starts screaming, "Who threw that?" They did not know it's piss. They might, they probably know now. They probably heard at the time. They just thought it was like a drink going out the window. Candela was pissed. Yeah. <laughs> they were all pissed. <laughs> and. And so I guess uh, he freaked out, and I just put out my hands that it was me, and then I got scolded like, a, like a, I felt like I was in school. <laughs> and then we just went on, and like, he, like they were freaking because they kind of like it kind of smashed them. Oh, yeah, no, sure. no, yeah, like, they hit the ditch. And we would have never known it, to, and then who knows? So anyway, there's been a lot of rumors that I actually pissed on Bob Brown and gave him a golden shower. That's that's actually not true. It makes for a better story, yeah, but yeah, it, it didn't yeah. actually happen. But I was, but that's exactly what happened. I swear. That's I a swear. Bobby shower, I guess you throw it. Yeah. And this was when the eighties before like littering was a thing, right? It was okay to throw things out. It was not the it was nineteen ninety two or ninety one. Seventy one. It was nineteen ninety one. Oh cool, cool. So then you worked for Candelo after that, what did you do? Because I, I think Candelo had a big outing with all the local guys and cut off using were you one of those guys or I had already left. Okay, you left. Yeah, I had left to go to work with Walter again. Because I wanted to turn heel. And I actually never did ask Tony if I could work here, but they already had their heel stable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Walter offered me a bit more money, which wasn't very much anyway, mm -hmm. and said, uh, "Yeah, you could, uh, you could uh, work here with me." I guess I got this idea. I want to be beautiful, Bobby J. Yeah, yeah. And just um, how did how did you come up with that idea? Because I think it was that's the that was the best gimmick in like Manitoba. Like I still think for everyone. Well, I, I wanted to do a cross between Adrian Adonis. And Shawn Michaels, Shawn Michaels' actions—the way he's very cocky and arrogant—with yeah, 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 yeah. uh, the flamboyant look, with uh, the way uh, Adonis did it. And it, uh, I could—I wish I could have worked like a quarter as good as those guys, or bumped yeah, yeah. the way Adrian Adonis could even at his when he got big. Yeah, he was—he yeah. was amazing. He was amazing. Him and Playboy Buddy Rose were yeah, the yeah, two yeah. Uh, most amazing big fatter guys that could yeah, bump. Yeah, yeah. And it's because they, they started out—they were thin, right? They learned how to bump. Sure, sure. When you start out really, really fat and try to bump, it's a lot harder than if you're thinner. Yeah, yeah, you get yeah. the techniques down, and then like they, they were amazing, and they were, I, I really like Buddy Rose, I like the eight, exotic Adrian Street too. Yeah, for sure. And, uh, really yeah, so I, I, I just wanted to, and they, all, they say this now, like, when you have a gimmick, do some, work on your strengths, and do something that stands out. Mm -hmm. Don't be the guy that they don't remember at the end of the show, and people, I'm not too my own horror, but everybody remembers me. You, I went to the first Winnipeg show I went to was CWF at Stagger Lee's, and you were on that show, and I remember you. Yeah, that's what I remember. Yeah, because I was just right out there, I was over the top, and mm -hmm, sure. and in this crazy world of wrestling, you got to be over the top to get over. So we don't have TV to get us over. We got to yeah. get ourselves. The minute we walk out that curtain, especially on a spot show, we gotta we gotta get ourselves over. And if someone just walks out there, two guys, they just do the moves, don't acknowledge the crowd, and they go back, it's like. Wow, good job, but whatever. Like, with me, they, whether I'm a, I'm a good guy or a bad guy, people remember me, and I, that's what I want to do. And I, I make sure I engage with the crowd. Like, I give them eye contact. Like, I want just a... You showed them your butt. Yeah. And I remember one time, I was in Minnesota doing TV against Rob Stark, <laughs> and there was only crowd on one side, the camera's on this side, and the, the promoter says, there's crowd on... 
there's there's only 50 people here, but there's no, no. thousands. And what was it? There was 30 people. There was 30. <laughs> Me 30, 20. Oh, okay. I got a gotcha. I was a promoter. I got to jack up the numbers. And, but then on the other side, there's thousands watching. So yeah, me, thousands. me, Robert, mm -hmm. I thought, who's a heel at the time? Was it? It was you, I think. It was you. So I'd be turning the camera, you shut up. And he'd be going to the camera. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it looked great on TV. But, it was good. People, but people in the crowd were probably like, what the hell is going on here? <laughs> but we're, we're listening to the promoters, though, for sure. So yeah. speaking of TV, though, Bob, you were on WWF TV. Yes, I was. How did that happen? And tell me about the experience. Well, Bulldog Bob Brown's the one that got me booked. Yeah. Rest in peace, Bob. Although me and him didn't see eye to eye. But this was before we didn't see eye to eye. Dude, can I ask, why do you think, because I think he booked maybe you, Cheech? Anybody else? No, it was me, Brian Jewell, oh, yeah. Jason H Henderson, yeah, yeah. Um, The Machine, or Jason yeah. Power. Yeah. Any idea why he picked you? Like if you said you're not his buddy? Well, we, we weren't in bad terms yet. It was shortly thereafter that we got in bad terms. Mm -hmm. eh? But uh, I don't know, he just he asked me one dude. Apparently he asked a couple other local guys who said it's bad for our careers and they didn't do it. Mm. And you know what? They never got no further than me. Yeah. You know, is there a media whore maybe? Maybe. I wasn't back then. Oh. There was even the internet back that's then. Right, that's right. That's but, right. But they, they said it was bad for their careers, and but they went no further than me, if not not as far as me. Mm -hmm. And now I can show this on YouTube. That's my, right. All my friends, I have a party and say, check this out. And it's, 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 it's a good time. I put over me. your YouTube channel on one of my other vlogs. Yes, I that's saw right. that. I appreciate that too. <laughs> who did you wrestle? I wrestled in Winnipeg. I wrestled Owen Hart. No, in Winnipeg, I wrestled the million dollar man, Teddy Biasi, and IRS. And I teamed with Jim Powers. I screwed up the finish on that because they always, I was hoping to get the money shoved in my mouth, but they did a thing where he, uh, IRS did a flying clothesline. It's like it was the only time he ever did that finish. And he came from the wrong side, so I took a stupid, terrible bump, so they, we did it over again. They said, okay, we're gonna do it over again. So they worked me over a bit, did it again, and they just edited out the bad bump. And that's amazing, I've heard of that. Yeah. So, so like, who else did you work? And then, then Brandon, I worked uh, Owen Hart and Coco Beware, or some guy from Minnesota who screwed up that match so bad, I believe I couldn't believe it aired, but they, uh, they uh, edited it totally out, and I wasn't even supposed to take the pin in it, because, but the other guy, they uh, went out with him in the face and then threw him into my corner, and then the ref said, you're taking a pin, kid, because I wasn't supposed to. <laughs> and then, well, so I actually got out of it pretty good with them, because I am doing the finish, and yeah, yeah. luckily I watched their stuff on TV, so I know what their finish was. For sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, so that, that was a really, really bad match, but it worked out, so. And then I, I went to Regina, and I wasn't used there, but I still got paid. That was like three weeks later. And then, uh, then we went to Saskatoon, and uh, I worked with the head shrinkers who were pretty stiff with me. Really? Really stiff with them. And uh, that was the night that Bret Hart won the title from uh, Rick Flair. Flair. And, I, and I was lit. And I, I didn't know that. Yes. And I swear to God, I was watching it through the curtain with Macho Man around his house. Come on! I'm not even joking. <laughs> I never. I told you this. Never, Come on. never, You're never, working me now. Never, never. Macho Man Randy Savage, my favorite wrestler. And but her, oh my, like this is ridiculous. And, and then it, it's like, how are you doing, Marty? Come on. Because <laughs> all the boys are calling me Marty. He goes, because he's heard a lot of that lately. Like, oh yeah, everywhere I go. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I can't believe that's yeah, crazy. So we, we watched it there, and then, yeah, there was monitors in the back, but there was a little curtain away. It just it was. And you were Randy wanted to hang out with you, right? Yeah, he saw me. He came right up to me and said. Meet my wife Elizabeth. Ooh, yeah. I never, and I remember Shawn Michaels said, "Hey, Mar hey, Mar he said, hey, Marty, you're retaining a little bit of water." <laughs> you didn't, this is this is crazy. I'm and actually, Marty this. returned on that show to to get back because I could get fired for whatever, and then because Shawn had turned on him. Then Marty came back to that show, and then Shawn was looking in a mirror, and then Marty's behind him, and he do a big boom, boom, boom. So I saw I met Marty again that night. So I can't. I'm 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 in shock. So I, what, what was the money like? Uh, should I tell you the truth? The, yeah, sure. I mean, we got our well. So what happens is you make more money off the trans. That's why Bob Brown did all the driving. He got the gas money. Because I remember when uh, who was it? I think Saxon and Cheech went to Calgary the year before, and they made more money off the trans than their actual payoff. Because they give them really good mileage. But I, I got like 150 Canadian cash. But that's in the. Early 90, 90, 1992, yeah. So. That's good money. That's like, think about inflate. what's inflation now, a million percent? That's like you got $1.5 million. That's it. And, <laughs> and, and it was right in my hometown to one, one show. And did you have friends and family at the show? Not really, because no, no I had a few, but back then there was no internet, like no, and no cell phones. So that's, that's right. That's right. You don't really get a hold of too many people, right? So, so then you do the TV. Did you get recognized by people? Yes. I was bartending at the Cavalier Hotel. And uh, tons of people said, I saw you on TV, I saw you on TV. And 
And then, uh, yeah, so then did that help you like get some girlfriends or, nah. or nothing like that? Or? I had, I was actually, I always seemed to have a girlfriend. I was never really single till the last two years. Well, I'm not single right now, but yeah, and then I was married for many years. You know that you yeah. were the wild single guy, and I was, no, no, and no. I was living vicariously through you. No, no, but no. now <laughs> I'm living through you. That's, that's the other way that tables have turned. <laughs> <laughs> so you did WWF. You're you're a big time indie guy in Winnipeg. Did that help you get more bookings, or did when did you go to the CWF? Like when did all this stuff happen? Well, Winnipeg was really small, so it was pretty much if you were a worker, you've been around for a bit. It was easy to get booked as long as you didn't have any killer heat with anybody. You just go ask whoever's running to you can yeah, yeah, yeah. you can work, and then you do. So then when did you start working for Ernie? That was the next step, right, Ernie or River City Wrestling? Maybe. River City Wrestling, yeah, yeah. So I turned heel with Wayne Staten, River City Wrestling, yeah. That's where I got my stuff. Oh, no, no, it was with uh, Walter. But then Wayne started running, and then I, I started working with him. And did you go there because he had TV? Or? Well, I always liked Wayne. Like, I, I've known Wayne since he used to I work. Like at, too. Yeah, he, he uh, worked at the community center at Chalmers. I used to go there and play hockey and stuff. And he was, like, just a part-time job. He was working in the office there. He's a good guy. I don't care what you've been saying. Oh, uh, no, no, I've said that. I'm sorry, Wayne. Was, <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, so he, he asked me, and then they actually got, they ended up getting TV, and it was cool. And Wayne's always treated me good. For sure. Yeah. Sure. Like he, and he always gave me a big push on TV, which anybody would love that. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And gave us all the freedom in the world to do whatever we wanted. There was no, like, we just got to finish it, basically. We could do whatever we wanted. Eh? And it was me and Jewel were a tag team. Yeah. Then Jewel, I turned on Jewel and he became a baby face. And then, then I guess Wayne shut down and then, I don't know how there was a whole bunch of drama and stuff. But eventually Ernie started up and I started working with him. And then, then I, I lost a ton of weight because uh, my weight goes up and down like a yo-yo is up again. I'm Oprah. That's my wife calls me Oprah. I'm yeah. on the Oprah diet. Go up and down, <laughs> yeah. up and down. Nope. But that, I lost when I was working for Ernie. I, it was the first time I'd ever lost a ton. I, cause I was never really fat, then I got really fat. And then I lost a whole bunch of weight. And then I turned baby face. And then that was kind of different. But I didn't do the beautiful Bobby. I was just a, more of a white meat baby face for, at that time. And yeah, yeah. I didn't like it. And that, now I'm a baby face and so I just do my, my thing. About, so you got to be like Stone Cold Steve Austin. He works like a heel, but he's a baby face. Yeah, well, I just That's do like it. you, beautiful yeah. Bobby. Yeah, I think he got that from you. Yeah, you. Wow. <laughs> he, he, well, he, before he did the, did the face turn, he actually uh, <laughs> gave me a call. Eh? But, uh, <laughs> I, I told him to leave a voicemail and I just texted him back. <laughs> There's that tone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's an inside thing you don't know. But, yeah. Yeah. I stole that from Wayne. I know he did. I know he did. Talk <laughs> you still think of me? I still think from Wayne. <laughs> that's right. That's right. So, Wayne, if you're listening, thank you for all you've done for me. Same with Tony Cadella. Yeah, same to you. <laughs> same Rob Stardom. Oh, yeah. SPW promoter. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, that's Danny Warren. Danny Duggan. Thank you. We're not at the end yet. Don't oh, get until the end. Okay. We're, well, we're only we, like. Okay. Can we? Yeah, we'll slice go. Slice it in. We'll so, slice it in. So what, what happened? What happened with, with CW? How did you go to CWF? You, what happened? Did did Wayne stop promoting, or was there like we're all leaving, or, or what? Happened? Yeah, I think what, Wayne sold it to somebody, some Rick Lackey or something. I've heard that name. Yeah, yeah, and then I don't know. Then it got I don't know how the it ended up. I don't even think he worked for Rick Lackey, and and then I just ended up because I wasn't working much much back then either, right? Eh? Because mm -hmm. I just started my ball league and stuff, and then. Uh, then uh, right when uh, in 1999 I opened up my bar, so I didn't wrestle at all because I was running my bar every day, and and Ernie was barely running anyway, so because he got complacent because there was no competition because yeah, yeah. Tony would just do his odd thing, but he wasn't really running regularly anymore. So a, a fun fact: I have one of your Bobby J bar shirts. Really? You you gave it to me. I remember I was a poor young wrestler. You're like here, Rob, here's some of my pants, and you've lost a ton of weight. So like here's some of my workout pants. Yeah. Here's some shirts. Um, so it's beat to hell that, that Bobby J shirt. It's like, it's gray. It's just beat to hell. My wife wants to throw it on all the time. Yeah. I'm going to throw this shirt off. No, no, no. I'm going to keep that shirt forever. Well, there's, a, there's a menu out there. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. That's there's awesome. There's a menu, yeah. So what made you start running your own promotion? Well, Wayne, after a while, he got he got bored as always. He, he's, he would start and stop and he wanted to sell. So I said, hey, I'll, I'll, I just closed my bar down and I said, Hey, I'll, I'll buy your ring and, and I'll take over your venue. And you got a bunch of young rookies coming up, and I'll run. Good-looking young guys like me. Good-looking like you were. You were very, uh, very handsome. I was a handsome young guy. Now you're ruggedly handsome. <laughs> I'm rugged. I'm rugged. I'm rugged. Rugged, 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 rugged,
And so I got a ring truck, this old milk truck, and I, I, I go I to that truck. Around. Yes. <laughs> you made a living for that I truck. We'll get there. We'll get there. <laughs> <laughs> so then, uh, then uh, when I went to, I said, okay, I'm ready. He said, well, I got a problem. I kind of sold the ring to Ernie Todd. <laughs> I remember what? <laughs> so, so then I was I actually went to a small claims court and I got a, I was served him with papers and everything and I was gonna sue him but there, there was in the case eh? and then that we just me and him just made up and whatever and I got my own ring built and yeah, uh, yeah. he apparently had a sweet deal with Ernie where Ernie was paying a certain amount a month. Crazy money. Yeah. yeah so yeah, that's good. That's good. I don't blame him for doing it. So I, and uh, yeah, so they uh, they did that and I started up my promotion. So your promotion, if if nobody knows, Top World Championship Wrestling. They started <clears> off Kenny Omega, Sarah Stock. I mean, those are the two names that really you think of when they come come out of Winnipeg. For, and it was all Bobby J. But you had an aggressive schedule. You ran a lot of shows. I don't. I'm guessing there wasn't a lot of money for you to be made there, but because you had a great other outside of wrestling career you were doing, and you even gave a young guy like me a living. Like, why did you run so many shows and there wasn't a lot of money? Like, like, like what were you thinking? You brought names in. You did all this stuff. Like. Well, I was hoping to one day, like, to crack that uh, glass ceiling where actually we're going to start drawing and get bigger and bigger. But then, again, that was before the internet was just starting out, no social media. And, mm -hmm. like, I, I pounded a pavement. I, I would get radio ads with Joe Aiello, and I would uh, poster everywhere. But there's only so many people in, in Winnipeg back then that you could you could reach out to. Yeah. And to start doing too much advertising is that you weren't going to get your return. And plus, back then it was only a five dollar ticket. When I started, it was only a five dollar ticket. Yeah, so yeah. how much money are you gonna make? Like, like I remember when we were doing the play game, we were getting like we get maybe two hundred people a week, which packed the place, which was awesome. Yeah. But with all the people letting their friends and free and stuff, I did a little guest list that. Like, what was I making? Like five hundred dollars a week at the gate. Like, yeah. And what's that? I've got to pay 20, 30 guys a little bit of money. For sure. I have my advertising. I got. I had my uh, ring crew to pay. Ring crew, you're paying me fifty bucks a night to do the ring. Plus, 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 plus I got a van. Plus a payoff. Yes, you were doing very well. Awesome. Well, and, and those training guys, it's yeah. crazy. And then didn't. Oh, you never sl slept at the, at the training center, did you? No, never. Who was that? That was a uh, Doug Bockel. Uh, uh, Hillbilly Tim. Hillbilly Tim. <laughs> 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 we slept in the ring. <laughs> oh, uh, Hillbilly <laughs> Tim, the other. I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm still more broken, can't you tell? <laughs> so, how did, like, how did Kenny Omega get into Top Rope Championship Wrestling? I'm sure everybody wants to know that. Uh, see, Vance Nevada was my main guy. And I don't know if he got in contact with him or someone did. I didn't have any of the training or anything. I just ran the shows and I let whoever trained the wrestlers. See, I was also paying for the training center. Yeah. Is one of my you're, When I was there, the, oh, you are paying me in that training center. I yeah. That. Yeah. It's, 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 so anyway, I guess Kenny just was one of the guys that came along and he started working and he, he was always uh, pretty over. And I remember, I liked yeah. it because he was, he was still in high school. So whenever we have our big shows, he would sell a shit ton of tickets. Yeah, yeah. And I would get a percentage. So he was one of my favorite wrestlers. <laughs> <laughs> He's pretty good too. But, yeah, but no, he was really, really good. But see, my biggest thing back then is I didn't give it, I was almost like WCW in the sense that I didn't give the, the smaller guys enough respect. Mm -hmm. I, I, was, I treated them just like WCW did, where they were just kind of, yeah, they yeah. did great matches, but they were the undercard guys. And I'd give the other guys the main event spots. And I and then I saw when PCW elevated them and they, they yeah. worked out really well. I kind of kicked myself. I probably should have done the same. I don't know if they were ready at that point though. To yeah, that's true. Right? So what about Sarah Stock? How'd you get her? Well, that that one I can honestly say, I'm responsible for Sarah Stock getting into business. Kenny Omega, no. I just happened to be running shows. So I I dropped off a tape of the of the, of the matches at uh, the Wise Guys at Campus. It's a bar at the yeah, University yeah, yeah. of Manitoba. So all of a sudden it had it had a big resume or whatever, and it had a thing. So all of a sudden I get a call from her, and she said she uh, she saw this tape. And she was a waitress there. Yeah, yeah. And she wanted to get the business. So then I said. Sure. And at that point, we just lost all, almost our whole crew to yeah, PCW. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, you know what? She was a pretty girl. It's like, come on down. We'll train you for free. So you trained her? No, I didn't. I, I think this, this kid named Rob started. Oh, so I'm the one. I think it's a tag team. You and me both. I didn't. I had zero to do with training. No, but you got her in the business. Yes. And then so then as she got, so she came down and she was doing some training. And one time I wanted to get her out in front of a crowd. So I I told her we were Valley Gardens, tiny crowd or whatever, but it was it was a crowd, yeah. And I or or a gathering, for <laughs> sure. And I, I told her, here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna go out. We're gonna introduce you as, a, as the newest up and coming woman wrestler in Canada, yeah, 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 yeah. and then you're gonna get cut off by Daisy Desire. 
a, who was a, a, big, a bigger girl who, was a, who, re, who wrestled. Yeah, yeah. And she's going to attack you and give you a DDT. And Sarah says, what's a DDT? It's like, <laughs> kid, you never taught her how to do a DDT. It's your fault. <laughs> She wasn't ready for that, probably. <laughs> but anyway, so then now that's why. And then she got she hooked up, I guess, with Eddie Watts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eddie Watts and Cheech. Cheech, they got her the Maritime. And, and she went to the Maritime like right away. And then she was just ambitious and got herself booked everywhere and ended up in Mexico. And you know, she's traveled. Forget about Sarah Slock. I want to talk about DDTs because you said you broke Sarah Slock in the business and she didn't know about a DDT. Yeah. So I wrestled you on TV in Minnesota yeah. and said DDT. Why was there heat? You're all mad at me. Well, because he shoots me off the rope, so I'm getting ready to get kicked in the gut and get a DDT. All of a sudden, he fucking shoots a close leg. Mm -hmm. But the champ that I am, I took a great bump. Mm -hmm. This guy still complains about it. I'll get a text once every three months. Hey, what about that DDT? <laughs> Ridiculous. Um, so, Bob, one thing you did um, better than any other promoter I've ever worked for, and I've worked for tons, is you really took the guys and helped us grow by taking us on the road. I'm not on for your promotion. You took us to, you, my first ever trip to the States was you. How did that happen? Uh, and your first trip to the States. Yes. How did that happen? I just, uh, I guess Vance gave me a bunch of numbers. Because Vance, Vance about it, like some people don't like him. I, I like Vance. Did you get his book? Did you get his book yet? Did no. You, no, I got his book. I, I, I know, I better order it still. But yeah, he did so much for me. Like he was, Made my job so much easier, yeah, for sure, for sure. and he. I guess I think it was him that got some numbers for me for all over the place because there was no internet. Like it yeah. was just starting out, and I guess I got a hold of a couple promoters and, and we booked some stuff, and we had a little difficulties getting over the border. But the, didn't ring wasn't ringmasters involved or something or Easy Rider or something or didn't they send a tape to or Minnesota? But didn't maybe that, that was after when you faved me and went down with Kenny Omega <laughs> to the states and I heard about it later it's like oh thanks kid for getting me booked for the record that's the first time Kenny Omega ever went to the United States I took him but I don't want to take that, <laughs> forget that. He, he won't even reply to my email anymore but, uh, that's a different story but, but so anyway, how, it, how did it go it went good like, so, well we got turned away from the border so we snuck three times right? three times uh, something like that and then we ended up going through another border and it still haunts me to this day they still ask me about went to the border they have a transcript of every lie we told on that <laughs> I didn't tell any lies. No lies. And for the record, they told me we got fingerprinted. They, I almost got sent back. We never got fingerprinted, did we? I don't. I don't remember getting fingerprinted. I don't want. Okay, I don't want to take away from the interview. I'm going to tell you just quickly. We get put in the room, right? All of us are in separate rooms, and I'm wearing a hat. And the guy puts on the rubber gloves, <laughs> and he legit does a snap. And I'm a young kid, and I'm like, I want to wrestle in state so bad, but I, I think I'd do anything for that, but I won't do that. And then he takes my hat off and pats my hair with his gloves. It was a great scare tactic, border police, <laughs> but uh, whew, I was scared. Now back to you there, kid. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is, we, we would have been okay, but then there were six, was six of us, I think, or there was quite a few of us anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And me, you, Mercury, Steve Cox. That's it. That's it. It was four of us. Yeah. And one, one of you guys, not me, <laughs> I guess... It was it you? I had a bunch of gear, right? Mm -hmm. Well, we all had gear, but then they uh, we started going out for training, oh. and then someone told them our work names, oh, which were amazing. which were all different from our real names. Oh, so the internet was just coming out, and I guess Google would just started out, and they Googled and saw on one of the websites Canadian Invasion with all our pictures. <laughs> Back to Winnipeg we go. <laughs> I wasn't yet until my work. somebody did. It was not me. It definitely wasn't me. Yeah, but anyway, so yeah, we I think we worked out for Neil Pro Wrestling. Yeah. Oh no, but the first show was War of the Wheel. That was uh with Dark Child, Dark Child in Wisconsin, Wisconsin. <laughs> in the in the back of some building. Yeah. <laughs> oh uh, in front of like oh. Oh, sorry, kid. <laughs> and then then we did uh Neil Pro. Neil Pro, yeah, that's on there, that's on YouTube. Yeah, there was a lot of good talent on that show. Like, about like it, yeah. who was it? Mr. Kennedy was on that Ken show. Ken Anderson, Sean Devari, Austin Aries, ODB, Lacey, Rain, of course a psychopath. Um, sick Nick Mondo, dysfunction, Ton, yeah. tons of guys. Tons and of guys. and who, who who got over? We did. <laughs> we got over. <laughs> yeah. You did, you did. I was wrestle, wrestle, wrestle. Yeah. I gotta show you I can wrestle. You understand the business. How about that? So let's talk about Saskatchewan. Oh, okay. Oh, well, yeah, yeah. I want to talk about Stampede Wrestling, but first let's talk about Saskatchewan. So we get booked out for whatever it was it called. It was back. High, or no, it was Western High Impact Pro. Whip. That's how old we are. It wasn't even High Impact Wrestling. Yeah. It, was it was Whip. whip. So we got booked probably in the opener. Uh, it the was one, the opener. Yeah, because there was a few Winnipeg guys. We all went down together. And this kid, the best baby face you ever saw that night, he was so over. Yeah. 
And uh, I guess he had a good heel. He had a good, a good heel carrying him that night. But, it was 100. percent But yeah, that we had like some of the heat of the night. I'd say it, it wasn't some. It was the heat of the night. The Saskatchewan guys. They screen. could. They couldn't follow him. They couldn't. We got, <laughs> we got heat over the heat of the night. Yeah. You said we did got too much heat for being in the opener. Yeah, yeah. I don't think we did any moves. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. You did. You did your Bobby Salt. I'll call yeah. it. And, uh, and don't so, do it anymore. <laughs> so what about like Stampede Wrestling? So. One of my bucket lists was to wrestle for Stampede Wrestling, and I could never have done that without you. So how did that happen? Uh, Johnny Devine hooked that up. Really? See, the way I met Johnny Devine is I was at uh, we were doing a wrestling show with uh, Social at Park City. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Dr. Luther was on it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, Don Callis was on it. Kenny Omega was on it. Mm -hmm. uh, Kenny was just that was his home community center yeah. actually. So we're gonna do this gimmick where we we serve booze, but we do wrestling, and then after that we tear the ring down, and it's a social, and. Uh, Oh yeah, and then Ernie Todd reported me to the liquor commission so I couldn't sell booze till after the ring was set there and down. But uh, yeah, so Johnny Devine's mom was after the work at the liquor commission. And she she's wrestling, she was my son wrestles uh, in Calgary. And his name is Hotshot Johnny Devine. And back then they were just, Stampy was on TV. A channel. A channel. And I said, so, oh yeah, so I said, well tell him he's ever in town. Uh, to look me up, and so he came in and wrestled with some guys. I saw the Calgary guys came in. Yeah, yeah. Then he got me hooked up with the hearts uh, for us to go down and get a tour of the dungeon. Take some bumps, which I didn't. I just watched. I took bumps. And yeah, you yeah, took yeah. some bumps, and then we all had a, we all went and did a show for them. At yeah. the, what was that place called? The Pavilion? Or? I don't know what it was called. I don't know. I don't the, know the Silver Dollar? Yeah, 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 I don't we'll call it that. I actually went and wrestled for them one other time, and I wrestled Ross Hart. Really? And he was called Rory Hunter. He changed his name for some reason. <laughs> and I worked him. <laughs> so I'll, I'll talk about Bobby more because he's, he's not putting it over. So Bobby paid all the trans, paid her hotels. Probably bought all the booze, not that there, there, there was a lot of booze. We got pulled over too. <laughs> oh, hey, hey, drinking it, no, no, no. <laughs> he had a, we had a TV up in his bed. Yes, yes. We had, we had, I had this TV, the old ones, the little 12 inch ones, and he had a, we had the it was a cigarette lighter. Yeah, and then you do the, you have the tape you can put underneath and we're watching some, uh, <laughs> some wrestling tapes. Yeah, wrestling, stuff. wrestling tapes. And some other stuff. Yeah, <laughs> but Bobby pays for all this and then uh, hearts paid for our wrestling license. I don't know how much it costs. It might even be free. I don't know, but I, I think they pay for it. And, and he didn't even ask for our payoffs when, when the hearts paid us 10 bucks each. He didn't ask for the 10 bucks. <laughs> that's a nice guy. Yeah, he paid for it all. I we got to live our dream. Once. I was getting it back 10 Yeah, that. that's right. That's right. I, I mean, and there was lots of talent on that show too. And it's like, it was a dream come true when you really think about yeah, it. Yeah, it was, it was really cool. I got my tape on, my match on tape. I don't know if you got yeah, it. I do, I do, yeah, I do, I do, I do, I do. I worked quick and kick. Melnick. Worked, Melnick. Me and Woody worked uh, worked uh, the Myers Brothers. Oh, yeah, it was good. It was good. We we had Teddy Hart, like all those guys. Yeah, it was awesome. Stu Hart was still alive. Yes, he was. Uh, he asked me if I was in Japanese because I was my chubby cheeks. <laughs> I know who else did. Now Dog with Sean thought I was really? Japanese too. Yes, he's a guy I never met. I wish I, I wish I could. I only met him when Tony had his benefit show at the Summer Forum, and he was a pretty good. On his last days, really? yeah, and I went up to talk to him because it was an honor to meet him and stuff. And so, when you're running top rope, you run in a lot of names. So, what was your experience with uh, Sunny? <laughs> I have no experience with Sunny because she no showed twice and left a very drunken message for Joe Aiello on his voicemail for him to play on the air, which she called me right away and said, "I cannot air that." <laughs> <laughs> and then I, uh, I. Uh, I buried him on the internet because it was funny. There was like the internet was big now. You it was just started, but yeah, I, I sent it to some dirt sheet places. Did you bury him as Bobby J or like a different name, like Fudge or something? Or no, no. There's, only, there's only one Fudge in Winnipeg <laughs> <laughs> and one Tonic. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so then and then uh, Chris Candido called me and just said, "If you put any more on the internet, I'm going to break your legs." Really? And he died a couple years later from a broken leg, like clock. Just. Pretty scary. The crazy thing is you broke your leg too. I did. Uh, that's great. So Katie awesome. was Joey Royale. <laughs> that's, oh, that's <laughs> the late great. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Awesome. What about Davy Boy Smith? Davy Boy Smith. So how I got a hold of him is on a night of doubles. I uh, when they no showed somebody gave me Road Warrior animals or hawks. I had an animal's phone number, so I called him. Said, can you get here from Minneapolis? A quick flight, but they, there's no way they could do it. He goes, you know what? I've got Davy Boy Smith's number, and he's in Calgary. Do you want it? So I got a hold of him. There's no way he could get there, but he, I booked him for the next show. And I was able to announce it at the show, which was good. That was good. Yeah. 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 So, but so then for the next show, when uh, he came in, 
Sonny and Kanita were booked again, and then they. I have that poster. Yes. Do you? Yeah, you make it. Make a nut copy of it for me. Oh, I would like to have it here. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Now we can do that. It's easy. Yeah. Back in the day, it was pretty. I'll just take a picture of it. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, they no showed and like whatever. I spent. I sent them about two hundred dollars American each for deposit. They were only getting like four hundred or something each. And they got a plane ticket, which they knew they were able to switch over. Mm -hmm. So why would they count for the extra two hundred dollars, right? They got sure, the plane sure. ticket, they got the thing. That was dumb part of me. Uh, I never sent a deposit again after that. So, so but back to Davey. So so he came and worked for us. Or yes, worked for you, right? Yeah, I, I know. I got the opportunity to work from him. It's one of the I'd say highlights of my career again, thanks to you, there, kid. I, I got to tell you something you don't know. Right. So we were driving. We we did show Brandon, and we're oh, driving back. Yeah. <laughs> me and Davey. Davey's in the front seat and somebody else was driving and you're beside me and I kept star 67 and calling your cell phone oh. <laughs> and I told him I was gonna do it and he kept like fuck it must be something rat that's mad at me fuck it must be something rat that's mad at me and me and Dave are like <laughs> oh. and he didn't I never told you this till right now I'm learning so much about you yes, it, was, it, was, it was a harmless room <laughs> yeah no so he worked with Brandon and, and he did um and then he worked. We, uh, we, we party too. We partied hard. Yes. That night. Like, yeah. In Winnipeg, especially. Yeah. yeah. He was. Uh, I'm gonna be honest. I thought, man, Davey was such an awesome guy. I thought, man, I'm, I'm wrestling full time. I'm, I'm making a living as a wrestler now. Davey Boy Smith's my buddy, and maybe I got a chance to go somewhere. You know, and you know, shit happens. Right? Yeah, but, yeah. But, and I know when when I dropped off the airport, he. Uh, yeah, like he, he told me he would help me out. He'll yeah, get he, some get. He can get some other guys for me, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Cause like, and I, I didn't even pay much. I paid him five hundred bucks Canadian plus yeah. a cheap flight. And then Harry was gonna drive him with the mat rats. Yeah. And nobody knows this. He uh, he actually said take Harry's flight off of my payoff. And and I did the, whatever it was like three hundred dollars. So instead of giving him a thousand for two nights, I gave him whatever the number was like seven hundred. And he did that out of his own pocket because Harry was only sixteen years at the time, but they were gonna bring a carload and he wanted his son to come with him, right? Sure. And it's, so I keep putting over what you've done for me, and uh, like you introducing me to Harry, like Harry and I used to trade VHS wrestling tapes back and forth oh, in the mail, mm. and like Harry helped me get sponsors in Japan when I wrestled there. He helped me get a booking in the UK when I went there. Like he's he's helped me out a lot. So yeah, that's I, awesome. I, I couldn't have done that without you there, kid. Well, you, I I, I set the table, but you ate, ate the food. Ate the food. <laughs> so speaking of setting the table and eating the food, uh, we talk about beer and bologna or hot dog and a handshake. Bobby, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Oh, I, wait a minute. I'm still waiting for the... <laughs> God, I forgot about the bullet. What the heck? <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. So a lot of guys talk about payoffs. And let's be honest, we're not making a boatload of money. Nah. But there was one show you promoted at Morris Place Community Center. It was a baseball um, a baseball event. And you said to us, you were giving us pay. I don't remember what the pay was. But you told us we could drink as much beer as we physically mm -hmm. could until the end of the show. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. I'm telling you, I took advantage of that. I've got oh, that match on tape. I can say stuff too about that day, day but I won't. <laughs> <laughs> what happens to Morris Place stays in Morris Place. <laughs> but the funny thing is, so a lot of the guys were like, Rob, what are you doing? You're, you're getting drunk. I'm like, if, if we were getting paid in, in uh, chicken wings, as much as we eat before the show, what do you think I'd be doing? I'd be eating those chicken wings. You're the only promoter that gave me like as much beer as I could drink. I did that another time. Maybe I wasn't booked. I don't remember. You were, remember the Can Am guys were in town who went to the rookies? <gasps> 25 cent draft night. I just kept giving. That was me? ridiculous. 20, oh, I remember that. Oh, and I, I just kept, kept bringing trays out and trays out and trays out for everybody. <laughs> but that was after the show. That was after, after the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was, I had to drink as much as I physically could and then perform. I wrestled the big O. <laughs> and I let him chop me all match. And I think I finished, I gave him one chop. And <laughs> Big O, where's the big O? Actually, my niece works at a movie theater. And she goes, yeah, well, my one of these, uh, my bosses knows you. He used to wrestle. And then she goes, his name is Owen. It was a big O. Big O. <laughs> He's my niece's boss. So you treat her right. <laughs> he had the best theme music ever because Steve Stryker did, he used to like mix music in. So it was, the big show had that song. Oh, it's the big show. But he said, you can hear Stryker. Oh, instead of show. <laughs> the so, big O. Yeah, so, he didn't say big. You hear the big, then Stryker. Oh, <laughs> it's kind of like when you do your, it's time, it's your bologna time. <laughs> I buy pop for that. <laughs> but, but I'm still waiting for my bologna. You know, I sometimes, you know, you know what, you know how he, he shows emails of people? I've been emailing it persistently for months. I wanted to be on beer and bologna. 
I asked him a whole bunch of questions. He only aired two of them. I, I aired some of them. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna run out of content one day. I have to do a big question thing. So I, I gotta plan this stuff, right? You know. So, so now what have we talked about? We talked about Stampede. We talked about Candelo. Why did you stop promoting? My second, like, contrary to what a lot of people say, that PCW put me out of business. That's not true. My uh, my 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 wife uh, at the time. We just had our second son. And I have to be Mr. Mom. So I was Mr. Mom to my two-year-old daughter and now to my newborn son, because she went back to work. I didn't work during the day. I worked my, uh, my business in the evenings. So I was Mr. Mom. So I just didn't have time anymore and I wasn't making any money. Like the odd show I'd make money and there was something I took a bath on, mm -hmm. but usually it was just breaking even. And it was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I felt bad, like uh, handing a guy a $10 bill. That's embarrassing. It's like, no, no. so I just, I just stopped. I just. I know if I had my one farewell show, then I'd around a couple shows at Baltimore. That's on YouTube too. That's the last TRCW shows on YouTube. Yes. Three hour Check show. It out. Check it out. On Rob Stardom's YouTube channel. <laughs> <laughs> so then, so after that, you just started to work for whoever would give you some bucks when you had a bit of time? Yeah, yeah. And at that point, it was, I have, I, I, I'm not going to toot my own horn, but I, I do okay, okay financially. So it wasn't for even sure. about the money anymore. It's like, I know I'm not going to get rich off it. So just, uh, whenever I had the itch, I'd go out and do it. And, yeah. And uh, I started when I started working for Danny. He actually had a thing where he'd actually make me have wrestling matches. He wanted to get me over, and it actually worked. I was as a heel. He worked. I got I got to work with Petey Williams, and he wanted me just to do my comedy shit, but actually work too. Yeah, for sure. And I did it, and soon the crowd just turned and started to love me. So well, you're, I went with it. I'm telling you, you're a fantastic worker. Like I, I feel strongly that you're one of the top top Winnipeg wrestlers ever. Um, you can say, okay, Kenny Omega. Kenny Omega is not a Winnipeg wrestler. He he mm -hmm. was, but he's like internet, like he's a world renowned wrestler. Right, yeah. I mean, guys in Winnipeg, they never they never gone anywhere. Oh, come on, <laughs> come on, come on! You're you're number one in my books. I don't care what anybody else says. <laughs> mm -hmm. But we traveled lots. We we went all through the states. I actually wrestled in Vegas. That's right. That's right. I got a cauliflower alley club. I did a I did a battle royal and I threw B. Brian Blair out. <laughs> And He's was, the president. Yes. He you went over on the president. Well, it was a battle roll. I threw him off. You went over on the president. I, and I was flirting with Ivory in the crowd. She was in the crowd and I was uh, flirting with her. <laughs> oh, she was fun. Fun. You, went, you went a couple times cauliflower out. A few times, yeah. Yeah, it was cool. That's cool. That's cool. Yeah, that's cool. So what else What else do you want to tell us? Um, what's What's in the future for Bobby J? Well, first of all, I forgot to mention, who's your best man? Oh, yeah. Bobby J is best man of my wedding. That's right. He truly is the best man. I think of him as, like, I love him like a brother. I tell him I love him. I love you, Bobby. Yeah, I love, I love you. you, too. That's why I didn't bring you any bologna. Oh. I knew you'd be okay with no bologna and only brought you one beer. And how about when we met at the, in Vegas at the pool? Oh, yeah. I went to I went to see you at Vegas at the pool. I was, was there on nice. vacation. He was there on a work trip. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. let's go to the Flamingo Pool. There's a lot of... Uh, Scenery there, so he came out. <laughs> it scene. was good. It was good. Yeah, was good. good time. Good time. Yeah, a couple of beverages there. For sure. For sure. You worked for me in Steel Town Pro Wrestling when I ran there. Hey, you know what? I've heard you mention your business. What was it again? Horse.com. I do. I have, I have multiple things going. First of all, I've been renting my pool out. Rob's been plugging it nicely. That's right. The uh, right. rental season is over, but for next year, you can email me, Kildon and Sports at Sean. <clears> if you want to rent at my pool, I also run sponge hockey in the winter time outdoors. Uh, that will be starting in December when the ice is in. If you want to put in a team or get on a team, send me an email again. You'll plug that email address in on the for screen. sure. For we'll sure. Sports. Well, I'm sure. You, you, you better say it one more time. And I run slow pitch in the summertime. I, it's winding down. My fall league ends next week, and then I'm on vacation for uh, till December. So it remember, like Kildonan Sports. At Sean.ca, my website, KildonanSports.com. Super easy. And it sounds like you're a very successful businessman. So you know I have a charity show coming up, right? Yes, you're gonna hit me up for some sponsorship. Yeah, oh, yeah, I want some sponsorship. Yeah, swag, money, Here. anything. Oh, sponsor you a party yeah. drink beer. I'm taking those cans. That's thirty cents. You better drink that can. That's gonna be thirty cents. <laughs> um, and then, and then, what else? What else do you gotta say? Anything you want to say to your wrestling fans? You want to plug your social media? Anything like that? Well, I got the TikTok. I got uh, Instagram. Beautiful Bobby J. Yeah, beautiful Bobby J. I guess that's all you say. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, and I've done the odd TikTok videos. It's been pretty funny. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of it, and I need to say this again: you don't get the credit you deserve. You gave you gave a schlub like me a full time living as a pro wrestler. You gave a guy like Kenny Omega his first taste of the wrestling business. Sarah Stock, you gave tons of wrestlers an opportunity. Um, you gave guys opportunities that didn't even deserve to get that opportunity. I feel um, whoever you get in the ring with, learn something. I, I said this to Danny Doug and CWE the other day, CWE by your hat, CWE goes to a show, um, that I'm the new Bobby J, I'll be the most over guy on the show. 
um, you are the true king of getting over in this Yeah, place. I never had the five-star match, but I had the 10-star crowd reaction. And that's, sure. to me, all accounts on an indie show, because you don't have your TV. I, I would never be good on TV doing my gimmicks. That's too slow moving, too much work in the crowd. But on a house show, I thought I was always good. And I, I think that's why I never got my, like I still don't get my my uh, credit, but like he, Rob's the only one that really puts me over. Like if they'll have, have a poll, who's the best wrestlers, who's this? Bobby I'm never in there, never. Uh, I know Greg Oliver at Slam Wrestling. He's never done an article on me ever. Thanks, Greg. Same with me, Greg. And, and, I, and I met you a few times at College Flat Arlington. I've never met you, Greg, but do an, do an article on Bobby. He loves my he... shirts. Craig puts over my funny shirts I always wear, too. But one day, maybe I'll, I'll contact him and let him know the, if I'm ever going to have my final match. I, I'm actually going to be making an announcement soon, but I'll, I'll get to that. Should I tell plug it in? That's up to you, man. That's up, this well, is not going to air until Sunday night or Monday morning. Okay, I'm going to be uh, appearing at Rookies. Uh, that's at, uh, in Transcona, where I happen to live. And I'm going to be uh, getting in a ring and just chatting up with the fans and um, making an announcement or two. So I'm, I'm on rookies. that show, too. I'm on that Are show, you? That's yeah. good. I'll bring bologna for that show, I promise you. Uh, we'll video. We'll video. You eat I got some bologna. Smokies in our fridge. Do you want to just want to share a Smokie? <laughs> we could. We could. Not right now. Let's stick to the thing. Let's stick to the thing. But I really wanted to thank you in front of everybody for everything you've done in this business and, uh, and what you've done for me personally. I don't know if everybody's going to watch this. I think you have a big crowd of, of people that are going to watch from Winnipeg. I hope all the international people who are watching this actually look up what this man's done because he's super fantastic. Again, this is going to air probably Sunday or Monday right before I leave for Tennessee. Yes, and I wanted to go too. I might fly down there. Oh, I'll just right. fly down. So when are you going? I'm, going? I'm leaving on Tuesday. And for how long? I'm coming back on the Monday. Yeah, and see, that's my ball playoffs next oh. weekend. If it was a week later, I was I would have been with you. Well, speaking of announcements, in February, I'm going to Japan. Maybe you can come along? If it's uh, the very end of Japan, I might be able to. The end of Japan? <laughs> end of February? End of February. Uh, I don't know. I don't know when. I'm going to give you my dates. Well, I'll tell you a story about I almost got booked in Mexico. Oh, can I tell a story? Yeah, for sure. I, I've been booked in Mexico. I'll get you booked I know. in. Yeah, I want to hear your story. So I'm in, I'm in Cancun. And people were talking at the resort about, I'm a wrestler, it gets the word. So that one of the workers comes up to me, like just a guy who works, whatever he was doing. And he, he goes, I heard you're a wrestler. Like, and he goes, uh, I go, yeah. So I said, uh, here's my YouTube channel, check it out. Stuff. And then the next day he comes to me, he goes, my promoter wants you to come and do a show first. And I actually had my gear there because he had, he had, they have dress up nights at the resort. So I, cause you're a worker, you carry yeah. your gear with you. So I had my gear, I didn't have boots, but I had everything else. Cause it was, they have a pink night. So I brought all my pink and everything. And, yeah. and then I had my wig because I did the schoolgirl night. So I dressed as a schoolgirl girl another night. So I had all my gear with me and he wanted me to come and it's like, these are my poor wants to do a show with the next day or whatever. And I said, you know what? I'm on vacation. I get really, really, really too drunk. So <laughs> thanks for the offer, but I, I didn't do it. And I kind of kicked myself. I, I should have just stayed sober for that, that afternoon. You should have did it. I, I just went and done it. I could have borne someone's boots. And, I, or I could have uh, been like Kamala with no boots on. Yeah, yeah. You know, I wanted you to give one more story because Zach Mercury made a comment. We, we both know Zach. I love Zach Mercury. I love Zach Mercury. So some of his uh, theories. Or your series, whatever. Well, like we won't talk about that. Yeah. Like, I love Zach. But it was me, me, Zach, or me. It was always me, you, Zach, Zach, Woody, yeah. and, and Brath. Yeah. You were my best friends in the business. And uh, so he said, Bobby should tell a story about when you punched Rob in the face. Well, I don't wanna... You punched me in the face. You... <laughs> What's here? Do you remember? I remember. I don't remember, so tell me. <laughs> okay, so we were in some town in Wisconsin, and we wanted to get to the next town. But we stopped at this bar and there was a bunch of girls there and not that many actually but rob was kind of i don't know he was married yeah. yeah so he was so he then he, then we we all wanted to go and he didn't want he wanted to stay and make some moves drink right drink right no like, you want to no, no no we no. can drink in the car you want to no, you don't drink in the car <laughs> that's against the law so we wanted to leave and you were crusty as hell about it and you were driving because we oh. only stayed for one or two drinks so we were sober yeah, yeah, but yeah. you you want to stay because of this girl sure sure before cool. he was married joe, yeah, that's joe right, that's long right. before she doesn't him. watch this age yeah but, but that's and uh so then then we're going uh, we're trying to go around take this exit uh, and you're just like, I can't see you. I can't see you. You're just being a dick. <laughs> so we're, and then there's all this construction down here. Oh, hold on. And then he was like, so he was being a real dick. <laughs> so then I, but he, he wasn't drinking, but we were. So I was starting to get a little buzz. And I, fucking, I was in the back of your side. Mm -hmm. uh, and I felt so bad. I, remember, I went, <laughs> in the back of my face. And he was like, I can't believe this hit me. And I was almost crying. I'm so sorry, bro. I'm so sorry. We should tell you not to. But I, okay, hold on. But he was driving. That could have ended bad. <laughs> but, so here's what Bobby's telling me about a dick, and I'm sure I was a dick. I'm sorry, Bobby. But 
Do you notice I don't wear glasses now? I used to wear glasses and I never wore them. I was blind as a freaking bat. So what, do you wear contacts now? No, I get the laser surgery. You're but doing. I legit could not see signs. <laughs> so I'm probably crusty and I legit can't see the signs. And then you punch me, you asshole. And you saw the, <laughs> well, you saw signs from the girl and she might have been interested. Come on. Come <laughs> on. <laughs> Oh, but, but we wanted to go. We were gonna get a hotel at the next. Is that did we stay at like the Wisconsin? And I don't remember. I mean, like, it's funny though. I don't remember where like a lot of towns we wrestled or where we stayed or anything. But I do remember, and this is dragging on. But I don't care because you're the best man, and this is my damn video. Yeah, there's no time limit. That's right. No DQ. Lazy. Thing. <laughs> I remember when we went to when we went to Calgary and we picked the hotel. Do you remember how we picked the hotel? I know the one we first went to. But do you remember how we picked the hotel we were going to stay at? I don't remember. So we're driving there's no around. GPS. So there's no GPS. We're driving around, and there's a lot of, like it says, hotel. It's all lit up. And most of them, there was missing a letter. It wasn't, like, it wasn't lit up. So I said, let's pick one if they're all lit up, because it's probably an okay place. And then we went to where? What happened? To the Cecil. To the Cecil Hotel. So we pull up there. We, were, we talked to the cops in the parking lot. Cops situated there since our first instance. <laughs> and they said, and we said, well, what kind of place is this? It's a pl good place to stay. He goes, well, if you like dirt bags and hookers, <laughs> <laughs> like, we're in. <laughs> no, then, then we left. No, well, we did a little joke, but we left. We went to a different yeah, place. Like, That's why we had that really big suite, and it was like super cheap too. I know. Well, I don't know. You it wasn't. It wasn't very nice, nice, but it was big, so for, for all of us, because it was nice. You paid for it all. I, I yes. tons of respect. Scotty Styles on that trip. Scotty Styles. Steve That's Cox. Cool. Steve Cox. That's right. And whether me, you, Merck, and Woody. Yeah. Yeah. My my little aluminum van. Uh, I can't believe we made it. And then, so Kenny Omega gets a lot of heat for wrestling. Like he was wrestling a fourteen-year-old girl, or I don't know how old. I don't know how old. It might have been nine. Might have been fourteen. I don't know. And it was all over the internet. What a what a horrible guy. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure you booked me in a similar situation. With who? With your son. I did. I wrestled my son too. Yes. But no, I wrestled him first in his backyard at a birthday party. Oh, you're right. Yeah. I don't. So how old was he? He was like. Twelve? Yeah, yeah he, my son, he learned how to do flips and stuff like that. So we did a thing where I wrestled you in his backyard for his birthday. Yeah, you, you paid me. I paid you guys. Yeah, you paid that was my nice promoting. So I brought my ring out. And... To your, like, ex-wife's house. Yes. And you set it up. Yeah. With wow, this is fun. Yeah. Fun. And then he came in and saved me, and then we held him up. And, that, and he actually, my, that was one of my proudest, proudest moments, too, is my son, who's now 31. We never even touched on that. Oh, well, that's, well, that's why we do that. That's why I'm touching. See, if you look up there, there's a picture of us. I was oh, actually in good yeah. shape there. You were, yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, and he would wear a mask. I remember his. we did uh, shows in a, uh, uh, like, he just did high flying stuff. So we did shows in a. Um, he worked for Candelo. He worked for Candelo. Well, the gimmick we did there is, uh, I, there was this old guy, Frenchie Lamont midget, and my son, he wrestled as a midget too. Mm -hmm. And then we did a gimmick where Frenchie would come out with me, and he'd wear a wig and everything, and be my guy, and then he would lose to my son in a regular midget match. So that I... Would get mad at the Frenchie, start to push them around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then they would, they, they both double team me. Then my son would do all the high flying shit to me because he couldn't do it with Frenchie because Frenchie was. For sure, for sure. And then, then he'd do all the moves and he'd pin me. Then Frenchie would go one, two, three. Then they're both baby faces and yeah. he'd sell our merch. And it worked out good. <laughs> we did it on, on, on the show. There was like, it was, an, it was a gimmick, eh? Yeah, and then my, so Tony Kendall uh, does Polaroids back then. Yeah. Everybody was lined up for my son. He was called Super Kid on that show. He had a Superman outfit with a mask. Lined up. And then I made him a whole bunch of posters. He had like five dollar posters or whatever, like you yeah, know. Yeah. He sold double of everybody else combined. Really? And he had to give Tony twenty percent. <laughs> <laughs> and he and he made Tony the most money off of a, off of, off of a, the pole race too. It was it was lined wow. up. Like, and then I took him to the states. We wrestled uh, with uh, with Rock and Roll Buck Zumoff. I didn't know you took you took me to the states to wrestle for Buck, but I didn't know you yeah, took him. Me and him went, and they actually. Uh, Buck had this eight foot ring. I mean, I'm, I mean, in there is. It was an eight foot ring. Not like, You're living and I, so it was a tag match. It was me and my kid against another midget. I mean, kid had to work heel with me at her hood. And then the, the the giant was like seven feet tall. The guy was seven. Uh, how do you wrestle a guy seven feet tall in an eight foot ring? <laughs> <laughs> he can reach to the reach. So anyway, we do that, and then my son's yelling, and it was a bar show. So the, my kid's yelling, shout out to the crowd. He's like, how old is that kid? He was like 13, <laughs> little squeaky voice. And then after the match, we had beers downstairs, and he went up in the office, and he was doing his homework, and everything was kind of cool. And then we, so then, this, is, this that show ended after midnight on a Friday. Saturday afternoon, we had a show in Minnesota. This is North Dakota, then we went to Minnesota. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did a show in the afternoon, then we flew home, and I did a battle, a battle royal at doubles. So I worked two states, and a province, 
two countries in the same calendar day. That's how many can say that? That's phenomenal. That's probably probably nobody can say that to be honest. That's pretty good. Like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't want to end it. So let's do name association. Okay, Are you ready? You don't have to go long, but uh, what's your Jim Nightheart? Jim the Anvil Nightheart. Uh, he did good business for me. He was a uh, very professional with me, but he was. I'm not gonna say anything bad about him. Dad. For sure, for he, sure. He was. He he, he wasn't. Uh, he was on. I guess he he, he loves recreational stuff. I guess. Sure. What about? I never. I, I never ever saw him do it. But I just guess. <laughs> I want to ask you about recreational stuff, but I'm not going to. What about Paul Diamond? Ah, uh, he was he was nice. I I I was the first one to book him when he came to Winnipeg. Vance set that up, and then he ended up going to work for Ernie, and Ernie gave him a better deal than I could. So good for him. And then I actually worked him on one of Tony Canelo's shows. I know when I when he was working oh, yeah. for Ernie, he never thought he was going to shoot on me, but he was like, nobody cares. Like. Paul didn't care. He was a professional. Like, and nah, he thought because sure. me and Ernie had, people thought because Ernie had heat and he was Ernie's guy. Yeah. But it was like. You booked me against him. It was a good opportunity. Yeah. For me. What about Tatanka? Tatanka was uh, very, very professional. And he did everything that you asked of him. He charged a little bit too much more than I could have, I should have been paying him. But he, uh, he, I agreed to it. So I paid him. The dollar was really crappy back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I remember he wouldn't stay an extra night. We had a show on a Friday. And back then it was super expensive to stay. If you didn't stay over on a Saturday, it was considered a business trip. And it was like next to a thousand bucks for the trip back then. Jesus. And I wanted to stay on a Saturday. And I was going to give him a couple of, no, I'm paying me my 750 US or, or, or I'm going home. So he went home. But no, he, he did everything I asked him. And he's always very professional, very positive guy. Like, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. like he's like, he, you should, if you said the sky was blue, it's it's even bluer. And you know what? The sun is shining. <laughs> That's just how positive he was. Yeah. <laughs> what about Rob Star? He's a good guy. I don't care what you talk about. <laughs> Can I say one more thing? Yeah, for sure. Support independent wrestling. The Kenny Omegas of uh, yesterday were were wrestling in Winnipeg and look at them today. So anybody you see in that local wrestling ring, you might be seeing on TV, making lots of money, and you'll say, hey, I saw that guy when he was just starting out or wasn't quite making it yet. So you got to support. There's so much good talent. Winnipeg, all over the world, support local wrestling. And maybe one day you'll see me back. Who knows? Thank you for your time, kid. It's been a pleasure. That's all you want to ask about? Yeah, yeah. I will end it on that. Okay. I'll make a note. <laughs> that's good. That's good. Thank and you. Uh, just remember who your best man is. Eh? I do. I do. <laughs> and thanks. And as always, you're doing a great job. And cameraman, you're doing an amazing job. <laughs> Rent Bobby J's backyard for a family swim, birthday party, grad party, bachelorette party, photo shoot, or just to relax. With your rental, you get his backyard to yourself and your guests. Heated pool, hot tub, pool toys, Wi-Fi, bar fridge, barbecue, TV and bar overlooking the pool, as well as bathroom facilities. It's open for booking starting Saturday, May 28th. Click in the link in the description for more information. Do me a solid. If you can't buy me a beer and bologna sandwich, follow me on social media.